Audiovisual Preservation Solutions presents EXIF Tool, version 9.38. This is Katherine Gronsbell from AV Preserve. We hope you find the EXIF Tool tutorial series I have created useful and informative. We look forward to your feedback. This is the second video in this series of tutorials on EXIF Tool, version 9.38. We will discuss the functionality of EXIF tool and become familiar with basic commands. You can find more tutorials in this series and additional resources at www.avpreserve.com tutorials. Using EXIF tool's command line iteration requires the ability to navigate around a file system, so some basic commands for doing that will be presented. We will then look at how EXIF tool commands are formatted, followed by what those commands actually produce. This will provide a strong foundation for more advanced use of the tool, which will be discussed in parts 3 and 4 of this tutorial series. Let's begin by laying out the basic commands for navigating around your file system from the command line. We will use or reference these three commands throughout the tutorial. cd, or change directory, will change the directory path from the working directory to the named directory. CD followed by two periods or dots will change your directory to the parent directory of the one you're currently in. LS or list will list all visible files in your current directory, while PWD displays your current working directory in the terminal. When using the command line, the word print, as in the phrase prints to terminal, simply means that the result of a command is displayed within the terminal. Before diving in, it's a good idea to look at the documentation related to EXIF tool. The manual page, commonly referred to as the man page, is a type of command, library, or utility documentation available to users. The man page could include command syntax, utility description, options, sample commands, and various standards and concepts. You can view EXIF tool's man page by simply typing the tool's name and hitting enter in the terminal. You can scroll through the man page by hitting the spacebar. As you can see, the basic syntax is described just above the tool's description, followed by a list of file types and metadata types the tool can address. This is followed by a rundown of options and their meanings. The man page is usually a very robust resource, and when you run into any trouble or have any questions, it's best to return to the man page for answers. To exit, simply hit the Q key and you are back at the command prompt. Eventually, we will add options and other parameters, but for now, let's look at EXIF tool's standard output, or what is printed to the terminal if no options are written in the command. The syntax is outlined here, with the name of the tool followed by a file name. This will print all metadata EXIF tool can read or write from the specified file. When we add options or other parameters, they will appear directly following the tool name. But for now, let's look at the standard output or with no options included in this command. In the terminal, I will change my directory to the samples directory on my desktop by typing cd samples and hitting enter. Now that we are in the samples directory, type ls to see what files are here. I want to see the metadata associated with image 001, so I will type EXIF tool and the file name of the selected file. Because we did not specify options for what we wanted to see, EXIF tool is providing all possible information to us about the specified file. Scrolling through, we can see the file system information like file size and file name, and technical metadata like bit depth, encoding process, and color information. The EXIF metadata includes focal length, brightness, and whether the photo is taken above sea level. Let's see what the difference in standard output is for a different type of media file. Since we are still in the samples directory, I want to list all files by typing ls. I'm interested in the metadata for Fred Ott Sneeze, produced by the Thomas Edison Company, so I follow the same syntax as the previous command. Type EXIF tool followed by the file name, and hit enter. As you can see, there is also a lot of information EXIF tool has provided for this file. But when we dig down into the output, 
we can see that some video specific information is included, like video frame rate and compressor ID. As an exercise, try running EXIF tool on other file types, like audio or text. Note how the standard output differs based on file type. Now that we have an understanding of EXIF tool's basic command syntax and standard output, and have reviewed navigating a file system, we can start adding options and parameters to have more control over what information EXIF tool can view and manipulate. Please continue on to the second video in this series to learn about options for formatting and exporting output from EXIF tool. For the remainder of EXIF tool tutorials and other resources, please visit www.avpreserve.com/tutorials.